Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade, joined by the legendary Kathy Sledge from Sister Sledge, and we are officially family after this conversation. <laughs> Check all the great stuff she has going on out. We'll be talking about it in the upcoming interview. Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Caden. We are family. I got hey, Kathy Sledge. <laughs> I'm gonna be one of the Sledge sisters. I'll be the brother you guys didn't even brother. know about. I'll the be like the long brother. lost brother who comes out of nowhere, and then we're gonna pitch it as a reality well, you're show. You're from Philly. You're from Philly, so hey, that's half the battle. She is from Philly as well. Good people yeah. right there. So, yes. Kathy, you got so much great stuff going on right now. You and I were just talking. You have this great foundation. We're gonna be doing a live plug as well on it, but. So we are a family foundation. I mean, you're honoring yeah. two okay people, you yeah, know, President okay. Jimmy Carter and Bono. Talk to me all about the foundation and the event. Oh, I'm so excited to be a part uh, on the board of directors of the We Are Family Foundation. And it was founded by Nile Rogers, of course, and Nancy Hunt. And it's an amazing organization that actually always gives back all the time. We bring in global team leaders every year, and we help them to fulfill their dreams. And uh, there's some amazing, just up-and-coming uh, leaders of tomorrow so every year we celebrate and then of course we honor um, people who have always taken that platform of giving like Bono and of course President Carter and so it just gets better every year I'm very excited you couldn't have picked two better people <laughs> and two more relevant people I mean the I work know. that Bono is doing especially with elimination of AIDS is yes. insane I mean yeah. that guy is single-handedly him and Bill Gates are literally killing it with this and he's always had that passion though and everything he does isn't it incredible and so it is incredible and the energy i can't imagine the energy tomorrow night so it's just going to be all over the place and then of course nile rogers and what's so cool it's starting to be called the most fun party in new york city every year because after you do the whole dinner thing then everybody just celebrates and of course it always culminates with we are family and um so it just gets better every year i'm excited to be a part of it when you look at, obviously it's great to be a prolific singer, but when you look at being able to give back, how much, when you start looking at your life and your legacy, how much does that become even more important than a singing career? Oh my gosh, uh, you know, and I ha hate to take it here, but truthfully, when we lost Prince last week. I was gonna ask you about that. Oh my gosh, I mean, you always feel like, you know, what we, we love what we do. I do this for free. <laughs> <laughs> then you come across legendary artists like Prince and the profound impact that he left on all of us. But me personally, uh, it's it's such a gift, and you have to treat it like a gift. And you know his life ended so suddenly. It, it, what it did for me is it made me realize you want to do all the things that you say you're going to do. And uh, I am a songwriter as well. People know me more as a singer but I've been writing all my life. And so it just really made me just embrace what you have and keep giving. The giving never stops. You know what's amazing with him is now it's coming out the money he gave away oh and that gosh. he didn't want people knowing that he gave away. Isn't it crazy? Like one, He actually he invited me to be a surprise guest the year before last for the Essence Festival, and no one knew. And um, he just said, no one sings that song like you. And so he told Nile Rogers. So I was the surprise guest, but the surprise was on me because, uh, you know, seeing his performance and watching the energy, I mean, you always know about it. Again, the pr profound impact that he left on all of us is endless. The mind boggling thing, my roommate's a musician, a professional musician and teacher. Mm -hmm. And I'll always ask, well, all right, this guy's had hit songs or woman has hit, hit, hit songs, but are they a good musician? And I asked him <laughs> about Prince and he goes, honestly, dude, Crazy. The greatest, probably yep. the most talented savant we've ever, ever seen. seen. And you know what gets me? You know, we always realize this, we realize this when we lose our legends like this. I remember when Whitney passed, um, and we're not going to take the whole interview here. No, but, no, no. But, but you but know, this is so true. Uh, someone, you know, of course, you always get interviewed when these things happen. And I remember saying, you know, everyone says, oh my gosh, she was so young, so young, so young. You know, we're always so young when we die. You know, but I, I, I did say this in an interview. I said, I wonder how many times you probably ran into, well, you're getting up there, but <laughs> you're not. You know, and when you are a certain artist like a Prince or a Michael or a Luther or a Whitney, you're timeless, you know, and um, I just feel like what I've learned through all of this is, you're right, the giving back. I think most of these artists always gave back, 
you know, what we learned about Prince is just, again, entirely endless. So um, I think it's, you know, I think we learn. We learn, and sometimes we learn after the fact. You're a busy lady right now. You're <laughs> on tour. You got songs I am. I've coming been out. Producing shows lately. With TV. Shows. Well, more. Um, there is something in the works with television with my daughter, like a Joan and Melissa kind of thing. Oh my God. I know. I love my. She, oh, she's awesome. like my ride or die. <laughs> and um, but it's not about our life, thank goodness. Because I'm tired of seeing about people's <laughs> lives, this contrived life that we all have. But um, it's a fun show where we're hosting, and um, that's just something in the works with television. But I have been producing tours, and I produced one called Kathy Sledge Presents My Sisters and Me, which is I get to invite sisters in song. And the first one is with Nisi, Nisi Williams, whom I'm a huge fan of, and Cece Peniston, yep. Karen White. And it's scripted, and it's a huge production. It's like, you know, girlfriends. And we get to talk about these love songs that we sing, and then we, of course, sing them, and then we do the background for each other. And it, now it's about to um, unite it talent agency just picked it up and it's about to go out in the fall That's and awesome. it will be the beginning of getting to invite other sisters in song you know hopefully like a Vanessa Williams and the list is endless because I think there's so many there's so many dimensions to entertainers that we don't see a lot of times some of the entertainers we get to sing our hits and we grab our towel and water and we run off stage but now you know you're gonna see more about CC and Nisi and Karen and it's like, you know, just a fun time. When you look at music today, it was funny because knowing you were coming in here, Nicki Minaj is on the cover of Time 100. Okay. And they were making this enormous deal here as an African-American hip-hop artist, and she's the first one to get the, co uh, the cover of Time 100. And there was a whole article. Know. They're like, there isn't a lot of diversity in music or in Hollywood. And I thought to myself, what is the problem? <laughs> you know, like, I why is there this issue? I don't know. That's the first I've heard of this. I mean, I didn't realize that. People actually thought that there weren't enough. I was <laughs> reading an article. Everywhere, you know, well, it so starts with the, it starts with the Hollywood issue. Yeah. What do you think needs to be done in show business to make it more ex just better with diversity? I think, it, truthfully, exactly what I'm doing. Actually, I think you have to start reaching out to these artists, and you have to give them that platform because a lot of times we don't know, and. Um, it was one of the reasons why I started producing shows. I also produced one about Billie Holiday called The Brighter Side of Day. Nice edge to that story. Because Another talented lady. Yeah, well, you know, we always see the story with the glass in the hand and the needle in the arm. I'm like, okay, we know that. But come on, this woman had to be one amazingly strong person to go through the time that she went to. But it's not about her life because we know about her life. It's about the music. I believe that the music tells you more about Billie than her life. I'm a musician and, you know, I think that, you know, we just propel you into the 40s, you know, and there's Louis Jordan in the Timpani Five and Max Roach on the drums and you know, um, Billy Holiday, of course, and Louis Armstrong. And, you know, what would it be like if you could step back in time and there's a concert and there's Billy? Because people say I bring her to life on stage. And I thought, how do you want to be remembered? You know, let's just lift this woman up and let's just have, let's just celebrate. Now it is the blues, but she's at her best. You know, and I, I actually know the scripts. Some of the scripts landed on my lap with Lady Day, Lady Day at Emerson's Bar and Grill. I know the scripts, and I, I felt like you know. I think there's more. There's so much more. I know if I want to tell my story, I want you to remember me for the highlights, and so that's hence the name, the brighter side of Day, Lady Day. So these are some of the things I think I'm getting to do, um, along with the dance music that we know about. But I, I've always been known for dance music. Is it, is it still mind-boggling that these songs are timeless? I mean, from We Are Family to Greatest Dancer, <laughs> that people of all generations still know this <laughs> stuff? That they're Not only that, that they're crazy. anthems. That, like, yeah. they're literally anthems. Does it blow your mind? Did you have any conception that when these songs were being written or put out, that here we are in 2016? No, not in your wildest dreams. I used to drive Nile crazy. I was 16 years old, had braces. I used to follow him around the studio and ask him, is anybody ever gonna hear this song? And I know he wanted to say, shut up, little girl, go sit in the corner, it's gonna be okay. But he, was, he used to always say, just, just trust me, just trust me. I wasn't allowed to hear it until it was time to sing it, totally. And, I, and you know, the, the ad lib was done in one take. I'm very proud of that. And that's because they believed in spontaneity. They believed that uh, we don't want it to sound over-rehearsed or over-learned. And I was used to getting my songs. What people don't know is 
you know, my sisters and I, we had, we had lots of hits in other countries way before we were family. Uh, when I was 13. I like to parallel it to Michael a lot. Isn't that crazy when you say the phrase, when I was 13, yeah, I already I had 13. hits. <laughs> I had hits. It was, there, our first hit was called Mama Never Told Me. And it went to number one in the UK. And I was 13 years old. And so we used to travel overseas and go do these massive concerts and then come home and get, get on the bus and go to school. <laughs> I never talked about it to my friends. Can you imagine? And I'm dying to know your thoughts. What would it be like being famous at that age in this era with social media? I don't know if you could do in this with social media. Without getting screwed Not, up. You, you couldn't unless you just had a totally different identity or you didn't use your pictures on social. You just can't. You know, now it's a whole different game. And um, I don't. I think... You just have to have a healthy attitude and knowing that it's concomitant to if you're going to be in the public eye, you're going to get the paparazzi, you're going to get the madness. So you have to really want it and love it. I've learned just from a very early age of growing up on stage, one's your life and one's your, your work. And you know, and you can't get it confused. And so, again, like when I would come home after these massive concerts, it would be wherever, Tokyo, we had a hit record there. And, a different record in the UK. I would get on the bus, go to school, and you sit with your friends and, you know, what did you do this weekend? They have no idea. I, well, they'd go. I went to the mall. I went to, you know, the movies, and I'd go. I went to work. Because I, in the beginning, I would go, I was in Japan. And then they'd look at you like, you know, these silence would come across the room. Like, like no, you alien? weren't. <laughs> <laughs> you came up like you were lying or bragging. or So what it did do, it gave me a healthy perspective that, you know, this is your work. Your life is most important. Your life comes first. And I would just balance. It gave me a great balance. And, you know, I, I think it would be really hard to do now, you know, especially with Instagram and Twitter. And, you know, everybody, you know where you are, and everybody tells you where you are. And now I think, honestly, especially artists, it's become a way of being your own public relations yep. person. So in a way it works for you, and then in a way, you know, you have to, you have to balance it. We talked about one genius with Prince, but you've mentioned another one a couple times already, Nile Rodgers. What oh, makes yeah, Nile Nile? I mean, like, I, we interviewed him Halloween guy. with Bette Midler, and I'm just standing there. I'm like, oh, that was a this, fun interview. Oh, he, he had, like, a mask on. He had a cool costume. <laughs> but, like, what makes him the genius he is? It's insane how talented he is. He's just a genius. You know, Nile, uh, and then I have to say, too, with his, his past partner, um, music genius partner, the late Bernard Edwards, they just created such a, they would just take artists and mold and shape and be trendsetters. And they, they were fearless with it. And I think that's what makes Niall who he is. He takes an innovative idea and he's not afraid. He just goes for it. And, um, and, and of course that sound, you know, it gets me, it's one thing to recognize a voice. You know, okay, that's Sade on the radio, or that's, okay, that's Gladys Knight, you know, that's Sting. Because that's, that's our voice, that's my voice. But when you can take an instrument, a thing, and, and your soul comes through it, and you, you hear that guitar and you go, oh, that's Nile Rodgers. You have to think about that. That's a thing. It's transferring it's yourself transferring to an inanimate object. It's transferring your soul through that music. Yep. That's, you, know, can, you can always tell when that's Stevie Wonder on the harp, on the harmonica, or Nile on the guitar. And that just amazes me. So again, I think there's so much genius there with his writing. He, he's a trendsetter. He always has been. What do you think of today's music? I, you know, I'm going to say this from my own opinion. I look at your era, mm -hmm. and I see the talent, the princes, the Michael Jackson, even the Madonnas. Like, everybody's trying to be Madonna today, but there was back then, it was <laughs> just yeah. one Madonna. Yeah, I feel exactly. like it's bubblegummy now, and I hate to say that because there some, some, there's so much great talent out there, but it doesn't feel like what you guys had. Like you guys were like, it was like Rolls Royce of music, I wow. feel like. thank you. You know, I tell you, and a sad thing about that is when we do lose certain legends, sometimes I get like, my inbox gets filled on Facebook, you know. <laughs> I hope you're okay, you know, you get that. <laughs> hey, call us back, <laughs> okay. I haven't heard from you. <laughs> I just saw somewhere where, you know, there was a Facebook, this isn't funny, but it's like, will somebody bubble wrap? Stevie Wonder, it's like, you know, we don't want anything to happen to him. It was crazy because we've had so many, in, you know, and so consistent the last year. But um, I think the difference in music is, and I'm starting to see some artists that are 
like the Jill Scotts. You there's, know? there's great yeah. talent out there. And I love the Alicia Keys. Like you'll see certain artists. I love Beyonce. I think that she's she's innovative. She, she's again another fearless artist. The hardest working woman in the world. Um, but she you is know? no joke. She's the hardest, she's and no it joke. all comes through. Her work ethics are incredible. And I think there are certain artists um, that they concentrate more on what they love, and it works like the Nora Joneses, like the, you, you know, and I think when you do that, you'll always have your following because it's not like you need a hit record. Like you're just, if you hear Sting has a new project out, you're just gonna go buy it because it's Sting, Adele. You're gonna, you're gonna want that because you know what you love because certain artists, they don't try to go for a hit. They just go for who they are. And I think we're starting to see more of that. Then of course, there is this huge, you know, amount of artists that they're trying to do what's ever hot commercial and that that does go away i think you have to be you was it music. always like that because i agree with you like i don't feel like stevie wonder made an album worrying about a commercial <laughs> Never. hit he just did what's from your heart and you know when you sing what's from your heart again like i'm a songwriter as well and more and more again with the with the impact with prince i just started i called up some of my fellow musicians and i was like I want to finish that Kathy with a K record. I want to do, you know, there are things that we say we want to do. But I think when you, when it is true from here, um, you can't, you can't hide that. And it's real. And that is the difference, I think. Some artists want it for the fame, you know, for the paparazzi. You know, it's all gimmick. But some are just, I have something here and it has to come out. And I think we connect to, this, to that. You're awesome. That's all I have to say about that. I can that. go on and on. And I can no, just I, talk. This is the stuff I love because we live in an era. I mean, you know, you see it's all about how many Instagram followers you have and how many. Exactly. Followers. I have followers. <laughs> yeah, it's, but it's it's like you don't see the Stevie Wonders anymore and you don't see the princes. And, and right. these guys were mold yeah. breakers. And it doesn't matter. There's talented people out there, but you're right. You have someone like Nora Jones who she has a year where she wins every Grammy under the sun, mm -hmm. and then you kind of stop hearing, unless you're a core fan, mm -hmm. you stop hearing about her. She's not. Because they're on to the next. But the thing about the Nora Jones is our, what she has created, she'll never have to recreate. She is that. Right. You know, she doesn't have to say, oh, let me just try to get another hit so people can care. It's like, you know, she fills up those rooms because she is who she is you know, the Alita Adams. There are certain artists, and I do believe it does come from the art form. It comes from the art. There's a connection there with the soul and the art. And, you know, Nile Rodgers, he's one of those He's still producing well. for everybody. Yeah, that because, guy. It's, because it's who he is. He won't lose that, because it wasn't like something, some gimmick that worked. It was, at least that's my take on this. Did you ever have, I'm sure this career is ebbs and flows. Did you ever have moments where it was like, it's not what I want to do anymore. I've never had moments where I've never wanted to do it. I've always wanted to do it. Except for when I was a, I never thought I'd be a singer. I never, I don't remember growing up saying, I want to sing, I want to sing. We just sang. I mean, we would harmonize while we were playing jacks. You know, we, we would break out and do whatever. Then, you know, growing up was West Side Story and Mary Poppins. We would know all the songs. And we wouldn't just sing along with the soundtrack. We'd sing along and find the harmonies. It's, I was pretty unique, my sisters and myself. I couldn't even spell my name at 13 <laughs> and 16 years old, and you guys were creating yeah, harmonies. Was, this was even before this. I was around four years old when we were really yeah. harmonizing. Because, you know, we were stair steps, and I would, you know, jumping rope. You know, we'd break out in four-part harmony, and I really thought everyone could harmonize. I would go, you can't. That's crazy. You can't harmonize. And so that said, I think, it, you know, when you grow up doing it, it's just a part of you. And um, I just, I, don't, I, I can never imagine not singing. I sometimes jokingly say, don't ask me, but I wouldn't, I'd do this for free. Of course, now what we're going through, I, I was just at, um, you know, we were just with the Recording Academy to, to support making sure songwriters get their fair share, fair play, yep. fair pay act. And um, so now I don't say that anymore. I do this for free because we actually are. Like, like, I need to get paid <laughs> now. I'm kind of, kind of missing my royalties. <laughs> <laughs> but um, 
I think it is in you. And I think when you love what you do, it's not work. I can obviously see you love what you do. Uh, listen, I, you know? I, I was a financial advisor for years. Are and you? yeah, and it, it, I, I, I tell the story all the time. The last several years, I didn't even want to get out of bed to go into my office. And I made yeah. a good living. I lived in Philly. And I was like, my parents looked at me when I said, I'm like, I'm going to go pursue my dream. And they were like, you're effing crazy. Yeah. Like, I still get it. I'm like, Good I get to you, do though. this every day. Like, I wouldn't yeah. trade this. And you're such a people person. I mean, this is, this is who you except, are. Except when I'm not talking to people and I just want to watch Netflix or the NFL draft and like, <laughs> and then not call anybody. Congratulations on everything you're doing. Everybody check out the We Are Family Foundation. Great event honoring two really iconic and incredible people with President yes. Jimmy Carter and Bono and all our new music and hopefully a TV show. Good for you. You're awesome. And Thank you. Good Philly peeps.